In this video, you might find out you've been committing fraud, perhaps for a very long time, without even realising it. Whether you use Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, or any other kind of video streaming service that requires a password and, of course, payment to view their content. So welcome back, Merry Christmas to you all. I am the Black Belt Barrister, helping you to understand law, committed to helping you to understand law on this channel. So the UK's Intellectual Property Office and indeed the CPS confirm that if you are sharing passwords in order to access services such as Netflix and Amazon Prime and so on and so forth, this could be considered fraud under the Fraud Act of 2006, specifically Section 11. Allow me to explain. You see, many different circumstances might call for both a civil and a criminal overlap in the way that the law applies. In the way that the law applies for streaming services such as Netflix and others like it, there are terms and conditions which require payment to access their services. Under Section 4 of the Netflix Terms of Service, not only must you be at least of 18 years of age, but also the Netflix services and any content accessed through the service are for personal and non-commercial use and may not be shared with individuals beyond your household. And during your Netflix membership, they grant you a limited, non-exclusive, non-transferable right of access to the Netflix service and Netflix content. Except for the foregoing, no right, title or interest shall be transferred to you. You agree not to use the service for public performances. So in essence, what this means is not only can you not use this service for public performances, but you can't share and transfer your passwords or content to another household either. So very simply put, if you share your password to anyone else that uses your password to access Netflix services beyond your household, i.e. to a family member or a friend, you are not only breaking the terms of service, thus activating a civil remedy on the part of Netflix to reclaim from you any price that is not paid for the services that are accessed by someone outside of your household. But also, as confirmed by the CPS, this is one example of fraud. Because one of the examples given by the CPS under Section 11 of the Fraud Act is to use the services of a member's club without paying and without being a member. So in other words, if you are using the services of a member's club, which includes Netflix and Amazon and frankly any other kind of club, including a sports club, without paying for it, you might be committing fraud. Now, if you think of this in a more physical sense, you wouldn't, I hope, think of entering a private member's club, such as a gym or a tennis club or a golf club or something of that nature, without paying for it, just because your friend or your father or whoever is a member of the club. You wouldn't think that you can just walk into that club with their membership card when you're not paying for the membership. Now, the same is precisely true for Netflix, although many people seem to think this is okay, just because it's done at a distance and from the privacy of your own computer. However, Section 11 of the Fraud Act makes it an offence for any person by any dishonest act remember dishonest being that which would seem to be dishonest by an ordinary reasonable member of society according to the recent ruling in Genting Casinos by any dishonest act to obtain services for which payment is required with intent to avoid payment. So if you access Netflix services or anything similar to that in a way which is dishonest by any objective measure and standard, if you dishonestly use those services with intent to avoid payment, so you're using the Netflix service by sharing someone else's password with intent of not paying for it, then you might be committing fraud under Section 11 of the Fraud Act of 2006. So not only would there be a civil remedy for Netflix or whoever to recover funds from you, they might also be a charge of fraud made against you. Now, further emphasis has obviously been placed upon this because Netflix and companies like it have realised that many households have started to share their passwords and they can track this activity because you'll be from different IP addresses. And just because you're members of the same family doesn't negate the requirement for you to have a separate subscription. Because the Netflix terms of service require that if you are in a different household, you require a different subscription. Now, of course, Netflix and companies like it will be doing this to protect their revenue streams. Now, for many of you, of course, this won't be of interest to Netflix at all. But if you are a prolific and persistent offender, sharing it with many, many different households, Netflix might, of course, come after you. Not just for the monetary 
monetary aspect, of course, but they might also report you to the police for investigation and potentially fraud charges. So let this be a bit of a warning to you. If you are sharing your password with people outside of your household and you think it's perfectly innocent, think again, because if you share it with one person and they share it with someone else, who shares it with someone else, who shares it with someone else, then you might get a knock at the door for charges of fraud. So please bear that in mind. Don't get caught out. Remember to like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.